Hey, hey. A couple of Team Red spatulas showed up along with a rather interesting looking heat sink. One fan on top, one fan on bottom, an array of angled heat vents, a solid, hefty chunk of metal. This just might be the most interesting GPU cooler design ever. Hope you're doing well and welcome back to Machines and More. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have any team green spatulas yet, but today I can assure you the focus is all on NVIDIA's 3080 Founders Edition card. I've been covering the AIB MSI Ventus card and some mods for AIB cards, and I will have a detailed review comparing that AIB card and the Founders card up shortly. But just like I did with the Ventus card, I wanted to get some first impressions out there along with some preliminary air cooling insights from SFF testing with this rather interesting cooler design. First off, this card is stunning, both from an aesthetic and industrial design perspective. The box is elegant and well-appointed, minimalist, but sets up quite the stage to present the card. The only accessory included and needed here for the card is the 12-pin GPU to 2-pin PSU dongle. Um, it's quite a shame that outside of custom PSU cables, that this is what we're left with, but I guess you can't have it all, right? As for the card itself, it's heavy, uh, but all this weight feels polished and purposeful. It's a beautiful card, really well made. And unlike the AIB cards, which are all mostly thick boys, this one is quite svelte and it's the only true two slot card in the mix. And instead of competing on who has the biggest heatsink, Nvidia has gone with a more thoughtful approach with what they call a dual axial approach. So this card is a card of two halves. The rear half with this bottom side fan is designed like a blower card. Um, outside of AMD's reference 5700 and 5700 XT models, there haven't been too many prominent blower cards recently. And there were a handful of 2080 and 2080 super blower designs, but the truth is those cards weren't very popular. And the concept of a blower card is quite simple. There is one intake fan on the bottom, working and unfortunately sounding like a jet engine fan too. Takes in cool air and runs it through a box cooler, exhausting it outside the GPU and outside your IO end of the card and out of your case. And since it's sealed with almost no exhaust getting back into your system, blower designs are great for system thermals. Uh, on, so it minimizes the impact on the CPU and other components. And so while they're great for system thermals, this type of design usually worked at the detriment of the thermals of the GPU itself, since it's basically working in a ball of hot air inside the box. Since there's also a fan working at upwards of 4,000 RPM, the noise normalized performance of these blower cards are usually pretty poor compared to open air designs. On the 3080 FE card, Nvidia took the blower design and incorporated it into the rear half of the card. The top of this card section is completely closed off, which prevents any exhaust air from getting back into your system. To ameliorate the thermal issues for the GPU itself, uh, Nvidia also incorporated the other half of the card as a very unique open air cooler design. So instead of your typical open air cooler, which exhausts on either side of the card, uh, this open air cooler actually takes in air from the bottom and exhaust it out the top. And so that required a kind of a redesign of the typical rectangular PCB. Uh, the PCB you can see here, it terminates in a kind of a V shape on this end. So this, this, this side is all open. And you can actually kind of see the matte black, uh, four matte black heat pipes running through this section. And due to the heat fin angle, uh, the airflow pattern is slightly canted towards the rear of the case. I, I didn't actually notice that it was it's really severely angled, but in general, the case air, um, the exhaust air just spills into the area above the card. And while this poses a CPU cooling challenge for certain types of coolers, especially tower coolers on mini ITX boards, uh, the predictability of this exhaust pattern actually makes it quite easy to work around. And I'll demonstrate on this in a future video when I discuss optimizing system thermals with this card. 
The last thing I'll add is uh, that the top fan presents something to work around and uh, build around in terms of cable management. It's a bit more exposed, so you definitely have to make sure nothing falls into the path of the fan. Outside the thoughtful cooler design, the cart is really well built and the screws are nicely concealed under the metal frame. And I think the color choice of silver and black makes it really easy to incorporate into any build. It's just a striking looking card that's different from anything else on the market. The GeForce LED lights up a neutral white color, unlike the Turing Founders Edition cards, which kind of forced you to appreciate Team Green a little too much in your build, unless you were going with green already, right? But you, you could also have flashed a bias from a different card, but that was, uh, you know, there were other stability aspects to consider for that. The tiny top LED does allow for a little customization uh, on this card though. The overall branding and design of this card is fairly minimalist and it's in line with the impression you get when you unbox the unit. So the card's branding only appears twice. It's the only true two slot card out of the 3080s on the market now with EVGA's XC3 coming in at a slightly thicker 2.2 slot. And this is of particular relevance to mini ITX or SFF builders where the thickness of the GPU means the difference of 25 millimeter, 15 millimeter slim fans, or no fans at all. With this card in cases like the NK M1 and Cooler Master NR200, you'll have no difficulty fitting 25 millimeter fans directly underneath this card, which is a huge plus for GPU thermals. The card doesn't come with any sort of support bracket, not that these typically fit in SFF, but it is stoutly built and sag was very minimal, two millimeters at most at the extreme end. Of course, the proof is in the pudding, so let's see how well it works in an SFF case. And I've gone first with the NR200 since that's a good starting point, and I've been looking at this case a lot. I'll also be checking it out in the N case M1 and the Lian Li TO150 and a sandwich layout case later on, so stay tuned for those comparisons. Similar to the first look at the Ventus OC cart, I've set it up with a fairly simple low profile cooler, the Big Shuriken 3, and I log CPU and case fans to match uh, the levels that we used with uh, Ventus OC card. A Cooler Master also sent by some fans for us to check out for our NR200 build. So I placed the white MF120 Halo fans into the top of the NR200. Uh, for some of the B-roll footage, I did put them under to kind of highlight and celebrate the aesthetic of the Founders Edition card. However, for testing, I did stick to the Noctua P12 since they are static pressure optimized and a fairly average price point for most users. These fans are really sweet looking and even if you're like me and maybe not huge on RGB, the shape and color of these fans integrate into this white NR200 build really well. And I really enjoy the lighting coming from both the halo and center ring LEDs from these fans and they work pretty well as a general airflow fan without being too loud. One out of the box issue I had with this cart is fairly evident coil wind for which I'll issue a final verdict after running the cart a little more to break it in and see if it'll go away. But here is just a quick initial sound bite of the cart under load to show what I'm hearing. It's not the worst, but it is fairly evident at low noise levels, which is often the goal for some of our PC builds, right? running the usual Unigen Heaven Formula and Blender 2.82 combination system stress test. The mesh panel with extra intake fan on the radiator panel yielded CPU thermals of 47.4 degrees over ambient for the 3700X locked at all core clocks of 4.1 gigahertz. And the GPU came in at 52.5 degrees before bottom fans were installed. Here the GPU fans were running at 71% and the average clock boosted to 1845 megahertz. And this was noise normalized for our next comparison at 53 dBA, where the addition of bottom fans brought the GPU temps down to 43.1, but also increased CPU temps to 52.1 over ambient. It's more balanced in favor of the GPU when compared to the Ventus OC card results. And this is really due to the top exhaust venting off heat effectively away from the GPU, but towards the CPU cooler. Now, I do prefer the GPU working a bit better in a high res gaming setup anyway. So you could just drop the GPU fan speeds a little bit here to rebalance things out if you wanted, uh, with better noise profile too. The GPU boosted higher to an average of roughly 1900 megahertz, which is a really nice performance bump. Uh, the CPU temps increased due to the distribution of hotter air in the case. And we saw that to some extent with the AIB card as well, but here the penalty is a bit higher since that top 
exhaust is directly working its way into the path of the low profile cooler. For builds in general, my recommendation would still be to run the bottom fan since the GPU is often your more heavily utilized component. And also there's a bigger noise penalty attached with GPU cooling in general. With the tempered glass panel on the NR200P, CPU temps were pretty rough with this card. I easily hit thermal throttle on the 3700X. Reversing the cooler airflow direction didn't really help anything, and it's pretty apparent why. Without a radiator panel mounted intake fan, the source of intake air for the big Shuriken 3 is the 3080's exhaust, which that's 325 watts of power going into this thing, right? So this is a really bad combination for the tempered glass panel. In terms of air cooling, a rear intaking tower cooler like the Fuma 2 may be the best bet for the tempered glass panel. Here's a quick sound bite for reference, all at similar system noise levels. Just to get an idea of where system thermals were like for a gaming scenario, I got in on the public beta action over the last couple of days with Call of Duty Cold War and played a few sessions to record in-game thermals. Playing on my ultra-wide 3440 by 1440 uh, monitor, the card averaged around 120 FPS consistently at maxed out settings, and the beta played extremely smoothly. It was a lot of fun, and I thoroughly enjoyed this title along with this GPU. In-game temps with the mesh panel hovered around 28.7 over ambient on the CPU and 44.4 .4 on the GPU at very tolerable sound levels of around 47 dBA. With the tempered glass panel, the sound was more contained at half a decibel less, but the big issue here was the CPU thermals, which were really high uh, for only running at 35% utilization. The GPU did run negligibly cooler in this scenario though. So if you're using the tempered glass panel and you're planning on the 3080 Founders card or another 3080 card, I would issue a heavy caution against running this card uh, with a low profile cooler. Anyhow, I didn't want to make this first video too long and I will show overclocking, undervolting, and performance with different coolers and cases in the remainder of this extended series. So please stay tuned for that. I'm already really liking the Founders Edition card a lot more than the AIB card and that's actually great news since the uh, retail price point is the lowest you can go with the Founders Edition card at $700 or so. Sneak peek ahead, the Noctua C14S is performing quite well and unsurprisingly working better than the Big Shuriken 3 for CPU thermals. But what's surprising is that it's actually very fantastic for GPU thermals in the optimal setup. I'm still testing through to find the best arrangement, but the big news flash that I can share so far is that I'm already being the deshrouded mod uh, from the MSI 3080 Ventus card. Well, thanks for joining me here on Machines and More. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Leave a like if you enjoy the content today and feel free to use some of the product links down below uh, if you're picking anything up uh, for your build and support the channel. Have a wonderful day ahead and I hope to see all you again soon.